Hey my friends, I'm super excited to be here today. It's been a long time since I've cooked for you. And today I have something really, really special for you. I have more requests than anything to do a borscht. And not only that, my lobster borscht from our restaurant. So in the next two days, I'm gonna make this incredible dish for you. And I'm gonna start out with the vegetarian borscht because that's gonna give me the base for you know my lobster borscht. So that's what we're gonna cook. I'm really excited because uh, a borscht is, even though it's a beet soup, that really doesn't give it any justice at all. So to me, it's a whole entire meal. Like it's a, it's a meal in itself. And you will see as we do go along here making this dish. Um, I'm gonna add a few things that are not traditional in a borscht, I would say. I'm gonna add leeks to it and onions, carrots, potatoes, cabbage, and beets. And then we're gonna marry that all together and make this really rich beet broth. So that's kind of what we're looking for here. So over here I have my uh, mirepoix. And you can see this beautiful uh, cornucopia of vegetables or this be beautiful selection. I have carrots, I have onions, I have celery, I have leeks. And then we're gonna add to it potatoes and then we're gonna add to it cabbage. And we're gonna add to that beets. And we're gonna really let this cook down slowly. And that's really the key here is that we're gonna cut the vegetables very small. Real, the smaller the vegetables cut, the more flavor we'll extract from it. So that's why, you know, generally when you're making a, a stock or broth or something like that, you'll chop the vegetables big, do it quickly. But here we wanna concentrate the flavor. So we cut the vegetables pretty small. Yeah, you can cut it really small. You could do a brunoise, you could, and mince it, whatever, and do it too small. But right now, this is gonna be a really tense flavor here. And we're gonna have a delicious beet broth. So just wanna show that, wanna share that with you. I'm excited because not only that, we're cooking in my new kitchen as well. So you kinda of see over here. This is my kitchen here, this is my new stove. I got one of my beautiful Crusade pots, a lot of Crusade pots here. We're gonna cook in that. Everything's been upgraded. The cooking uh, environment, <clears throat> my stove has been, you know, all upgraded just to bring you better videos, to bring better everything to you guys. And I think that's kind of cool for you because, you know, I always want to add value to what I do. So we're gonna start. Turn on my stove here. And this baby's got some serious firepower. It's got 23,000 BTUs. So, yeah, it can crank out and it can boil water pretty damn fast as well. So what I'm gonna do is I have a little olive oil in my pan here. I'm gonna take this beautiful selection of vegetables, again, carrots, onions, celery, and leeks. And then I'm gonna to add to that potatoes. I'm going to add cabbage to that and then finally beets. So again, here we want to uh, slow cook it and really render the vegetables out to get the maximum flavor for them. We want them to be really tender and that will give us a really rich, rich broth. And beet, you know, making a great borscht is all about the beets, the flavor of it, all the greatness that will come out of it. And you'll see this will all develop as we cook and make this dish. So, again, just showing you right now, dish here, got it on medium heat. So we'll do a couple videos with this. Again, everything takes a long time when you're really cooking it down and you're really taking the time to do this. Because if you rush this dish, it will not be the same. It won't have that elegant quality. It won't have that really beautiful um, characteristic of a borscht. And it'll be just kind of a rustic, kind of flavorless beet soup. And that's not what we want. We want this to be extraordinarily powerful beet flavors. Um, there's Ukrainian borscht, which has, uh, or, or Polish 
Borscht, which has a fermented beets added to it. I don't have any uh, in-house right now, but if I had it, I would add that. It's a powder usually. It's really intensely flavor flavored, and it kind of adds an earthiness to it. It'll definitely pick that up when we do this dish. Definitely get a lot of that beet flavor that I really, really love. And funny, when I was a kid, I didn't like beets at all. I hated them. And now it's one of my all-time favorite dishes. So just kind of show you where I've come, where I've grown along the way, and really enjoy this dish. And also the lobster borscht was one of my signature dishes at my restaurant. Really created my whole restaurant around the idea of making this lobster borscht. So I'm gonna make this rich broth, and then tomorrow I'm gonna to fortify it. I'm gonna take the lobster shells, I'm gonna take lobster meat, and put that all in there and really make it a, now a, a uh, lobster beet broth. So that will really be uh, interesting as well. But this one, vegetarian. There's also, also a meat-based one, which is pretty much the traditional, you don't see as much vegetarian. You'll see the one with beef bones, I think veal bones. I've come to some, I've seen some that have pork meat in it, but generally beef and veal bones, veal meat, stew meat, like that kind of very rustic style, which it is also, it's known as a peasant dish. We are just gonna make it into a really elegant thing, a really elegant dish. So again, we have our mirepoix, we're sweating the vegetables. And again, sweating is probably one of the best techniques to really, really get deep and intense flavor in vegetables. Um, so we're gonna let that cook. And as that cook will slide over here, I'm gonna slide over to the beets, which I have here. I just peeled them. I found that if you peel the beets, they are a little bit better because if you leave the skin on, I find it makes the broth a little too clear. So when I work with beets, of course, I always wear rubber gloves because it definitely will stain your hands and it takes forever that to come off. You'll have purple hands for a week pretty cool but you know also looks a little strange so I have my potatoes here I just have a couple Yukon gold potatoes I just chopped those up I had those in the refrigerator I'm just gonna throw that in already with what we have in my vegetable mix nothing fancy to it I'm just going to chop them up pretty small cut them in half turn them over here I use this knife now because it's very good for cutting mirepoix cutting vegetables heavy-duty stuff this knife is a beast you can see it just slides right through anything you know that's what that's what the beauty of this big heavy knife is makes cutting vegetables really, really easy. Now again, we probably could go with half the amount of beets that I have here. I have probably about 10, 10 beets here. So you see how beautiful, rich color that is. And I don't have to cut the beets quite as small, but I will uh, chop them up anyway. You could just see this knife just slides right through anything like butter and it's not even sharp to be honest with you i bought this knife probably a year ago a year and a half ago and it came right out of the box and i've used it ever since um horse is one of those dishes that could be served hot or cold i like it hot um, in the summertime, of course, you could put a little sour cream in there and puree it and make it a nice cold soup. I find it a little bit more uh, 
I don't know, refined, I guess. I would like to say more refined here. Making it hot and serving it this way, I definitely, you know, find it a little more elegant. I think the uh, when you make it cold, it's not quite as refined. But again, that's arguable because anything that can be, you know, whatever you desire, it's just a matter of what level uh, you want it to be. But I think just the cold takes away from the beef flavor a little bit, so it's not quite as rich. Again, you could argue with that and say, yeah, the cold is just a whole nother level of flavor in itself. I don't know. So we'll come back over to the stove real quick here. You can see the vegetables are really cooking down nicely now. They're really starting to come out. The flavor is really coming out. And that's what you want. You want all the, the juices of the vegetables themselves to kind of stew in the, in the vegetables themselves. That makes sense. Because as we heat it, the more you heat it, the vegetables start to break down and the juices of every vegetable starts to come out. And when you cook it at a low heat like this, you know, it really compounds the flavor. You could just really start to smell carrots, onions, celery. I mean, some of my favorite flavors are just smelling those vegetables. Really, really intensely flavored. And then if you caramelize it, you will come up with a different dish, of course, a totally different profile, right? So you just have to think about what you're cooking, what you're trying to achieve here. If we brown the vegetables up, we're making a roast or something like that, a nice dark vegetable soup. So now I'm just gonna start adding my beets. Uh, also, you know, definitely would use a broth or something like that if I were cooking this as a meat, I would use a beef broth. I would use a vegetable broth for this. Uh, for this particular one, I'm just gonna use water. But when you're making it, you know, with beef or something like that, I would use the bones right in there. I would use the beef bones. I would use the uh, chuck. I would use, you know, some of the, uh, you know, the heartier bones that you would have. Marrow bones, stuff like that. I really get a lot of flavor from that. It's almost, to me, it's kind of like making a really great, uh, if I can think of it here, almost kind of like making a ramen, where you're roasting the bones, making the, taking the beef shank bones, and really cooking that out, and then you're adding your vegetables to that, and making a really rich vegetable ball. Just want you to take a look here real carefully. Look closely at this and just see how beautiful already. So one of my fondest memories of Borscht actually was at a restaurant Les Panas, and when I worked there, we did a uh, incredible, amazing borscht, and we actually served it with foie gras and I think squab, which was wrapped up in the leaf. We took the leaf of the cabbage, wrapped it up, put the squab breast in there, and put some foie gras in there, and then cooked that in the beet broth. And that was like the four-star 
unbelievable, like totally awesome Porsche that I'd never really kind of envisioned. Um, I've, worked, I've been to a lot of different restaurants that make it. Um, the Russian Tea Room is one of the hallmark restaurants of Borscht. It's known all over New York, around the country, as being the uh, really kind of like the Borscht restaurant, I would say. I think that's the easiest way to find it. Um, grand Russian cuisine of all things, but that's what it is. So, you know. I worked also at the Russian Firebird. We weren't we weren't as big on the borscht there. It was just Russian cuisine, which was really cool. I learned a lot from that. Totally different type of cooking, totally different types of foods. A lot of rices with dried fruits and stuff like that. We did some really cool, uh, we did a smoked salmon soup. Took the heads of the salmon, took the bones, roasted those off. Made us really rich, uh, salmon soup which is kind of smoked and kind of really interesting there we go So this is really coming together now. I wish you could just smell the aromatic quality of these vegetables. It's unbelievable. Just really rich. Like I said, people who uh, are vegetarian, this is a great, great dish. You will not be disappointed. I mean, literally, you could eat it just like this. You don't even need the broth to go with it. But I really like this broth added to it and kind of making this really rich, intense flavor broth, and then we'll add some other stuff to it. I will cook the vegetables separate. At that point, I'll strain this off. I'll remove these vegetables, and then I would add new vegetables for that, for my vegetarian dish. And the very last, I'm adding cabbage. Again, add whatever vegetables you like. I will never tell you to add something that you don't like. That's not, you know, that's not what it is all about. It's about really finding your style, your techniques. But if you could just see that and you serve that as a dish, you would be like, wow, amazing, right? beautiful colors, it's got great taste already, and it's really developing into something special. And that's what I really like about borscht. You know, we're taking a simple dish, not simple, not borscht is not, not a simple dish. But it's really cooked down. It's taken, it takes a long time to marry these flavors together. It really takes a long time to develop it. Now, to get it going, I'm just gonna add, you know, some water to here. Now I'm gonna crank up the heat a little bit. Again, you know, this dish takes a long time to develop. It takes a long time to create it. Uh, I think anything, I've said this many times before, when you're really creating something special, there's no magic trick. I can't just boom and make it really crazy flavors. This will cook for about an hour, about an hour, hour and a half at the most, because if you cook it longer, 
The interesting thing is it self-clarifies and turns to almost like a clear uh, beet broth. See this really up close here. Like I said, I'm going to crank up the heat a little bit, bring it up to a gentle boil, and then let it go at least an hour to an hour and a half. Not too much longer. I mean, I've made it sometimes as ready in an hour. So it really depends upon the quality of the vegetables. Depends on the quality of the beets. Got a little salt here, a little pepper. This is fresh black pepper. Add a little bit of salt. I don't want to add too much because beets really kind of have a natural saltiness to them. And as it cooks down, the flavor will really intensify. I just want you to look at that beautiful, look at this. I mean, it hasn't even cooked 10 minutes, only five minutes. And you can see, you can already see the color of it. Anyway, that's it. I just want to show you this. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll finish this dish up and then we'll start on the lobster borscht. But the key here is really trying to make a concentrated, rich, intensely flavored beet broth. We want a very aromatic flavor to it, so we put loads and loads and loads of vegetables. I probably use probably two, three pounds to four pounds of vegetables here easily, if not more. And you can just see this beautiful quality of, of vegetables here, the consistency of the beets you can see everything coming together nicely and we'll revisit it in about an hour an hour and a half anyway thank you i hope you enjoyed this and we'll make this beet borscht and then tomorrow we'll make a lobster borscht as well until then cheers happy cooking have any questions free feel free to reach out to me again we're making a vegetarian uh, borscht which is a very rich and elegant beet soup and that really doesn't do it justice, as I said, because it's really a meal, and this is going to be a total meal in itself. And that's why I love it too. You don't have to have any other dishes. This whole entire thing will be your meal. So anyway, cheers, bye.